I'm good. All right. Just a reminder, uh, when, when asking coach uh, questions with coach, please make sure your video is on so we can see who he's talking to. And um, we may go ahead and we'll just kind of go ahead and get started since coach is ready and there's enough people on here. So coach, why don't you start off, just talk about day two and, and we'll take questions after that. Okay, sound good. Uh, first off, uh, Scott, that's a nice mini afro you have going on there. I meant to tell you that yesterday. Thank you. Yeah. Day two, non-padded practice. Um, you know, the first couple of days, I mean, we've been split up offense, defense, you know, kind of going at a slower pace. Um, you know, tomorrow's first day, we can actually put on some form of pad. So we'll be in shorts and shoulder pads tomorrow. Looking forward to that. No major injuries right now. You know, a lot of times you're so anxious to get started, you want to get through the first couple of days and not have any lower leg uh, pulls. So in that sense, it's pretty good. Uh, but as I said yesterday, by being able to have walk on walkthroughs before we started practice has kind of put us in a little bit better position than what we, you know, position we would normally be in of just starting to you know, coaching wise to work with the guys on the first day of training camp. So that part is good. We have a long ways to go and thank God we have more practices uh, to get ready for our first game. No more additions. We're still waiting on a couple guys to get here. They're not here yet. Um, so I'll take your question. Uh, we'll go Jeremy first, Matt Stevens second, Joey Wagner third, Bob, also, if you could please mute, mute your uh, computer, we appreciate it. We'll lead off with points. Hey, Lovey, I, I was told you could talk about him. So since he seems like the most interesting man in the world, can, can you address Hugh Robertson and, and what he brings to your program? Well, uh, Jeremy, first off, I can't wait to meet Hugh Robinson. It's Hugh, I, I think he really exists. Um, you know, we've had a little success going, you know, overseas to uh, – find a guy to be able to, you know, you know, kick the ball. Um, again, it's been great on the telephone. Uh, we need to get him here. You know, I can't wait to get him here, you know, into the mix with our guys. Uh, I know the kickers, you know, our kicker and punter that we have right now, uh, they are both in excellent shape and things, you know, uh, you know things are really looking good as far as that concern. Uh, counting our snapper, we, you can't have a better returning group of specialists that we'll, that we'll count on this year. But I can't wait to get him here and, and to finally meet him. I'll say that. I, obviously, Bob feels good about him as a, as a punter to, to bring him in. But um, such an interesting background, police, Army, 27 years old. Just what have you gotten to learn about him and what do you think he, he brings on and off the field for you? Well, I, you know, that's about all I know is what you said. You know, Bob knows a little bit more, uh, you know, of course, as he's been over there. Uh, but just based on history of uh, players that we get from that area, from that school. Um, and I know now we have a reputation. So as we start initially recruiting him, he knew a lot about the University of Illinois. And uh, Blake has kind of started something there. And we'll continue to go over there to try to find our specialist, whether it be punter or kicker. What's made Blake so successful in just his transition, and, and what do you think that can provide for you? Well, he's a deep guy off of the field, and uh, he gets it. And he's just a professional. No one puts more time into his craft of perfecting it. Uh, no one works harder than him. And uh, he has talent. I mean, you start off with, with talent. He's a talented guy. And um, he's been that way. That's the – you know, since he got on campus, he's pretty much been like this. You know, he kicked for us right away uh, to be uh, selected captain. I mean, says an awful lot. Uh, we just love everything about him. He's one of the best punters returning, and, and he's expecting to have an even better year than last. And last year was a pretty special year for him. Thank you, Love. Thank you. Lovey, good afternoon. Uh, Wanted to uh, ask you about Roderick Perry. First of all, has he been able to 
be with you guys and report to camp? And, and if so, or even if not, what did you like about that young man enough to bring him in? And what do you think he can bring to your football team, especially your, your defensive line? Well, Matt, I, uh, you know, I started talking about another player a few years ago before we actually got on campus and got here. So, uh, I kind of, you know, I learned from my mistakes on that. Rod is not on campus yet. Um, I know as far as, you know, what we liked about him as we were, were recruiting him, we needed, a, you know, we lost some good inside players that have played a lot of football for us. And uh, to have not a chance to get a, a player of his caliber this late in the game, uh, he became available. We started talking to him and, uh, uh, he plays hard. You can go all the way back to, you know, state champion. Uh, YouTube and sometimes state championship, a few seconds left. He has a pin to guy to win the, the heavyweight championship at North Carolina, and he does it. It's going to bring a lot of toughness to our team. And, uh, you know, when you're a senior and had his type of success, you want to finish it up the right way, and you leave a South Carolina State, and your first game would be Ohio State. That's, uh, you know, Pretty special. You, you've also brought in an offensive lineman in Blake at, at, from that level, from the FCS level. Um, what are your, con I wouldn't say concerns, but what are your questions that you have about bringing somebody from that level to another level of, of, of higher level of play like the Big Ten and like, you know, FBS football? Well, I mean, a lot of times, you know, we look at the total body of work and you say, well, that level, well, they, they play, he played Clemson. Uh, last year. So they've, they've played a high, not every game, but he's used to playing against good football players. Uh, matter of fact, he played against Rod Perry also. So we have some good history with both of them. But we just started evaluating the guy. I mean, Blake, uh, he's smart. Uh, he He's athletic. Uh, you know, we've had a chance to, uh, uh, to be around him. I'm talking about for you know, for workouts and things like that. So we've been able to see him move around. Uh, so uh, we feel real good about him jumping right in and, and helping us. You know, we had good success with Richie Pettibon last year. And uh, we think that, you know, we've hit, you know, we hit again on another. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Hey, Lovey, how are you? Great, Joey. So I, you talked yesterday, Lovey, about the offensive line and the experience you have returning. And Alex mentioned how some of those early years as freshmen or sophomore, those were really tough for, for that class and that offensive line to go through. How did you guys as a coaching staff you know, kind of keep them you know, mentally up in the midst of a 2-10 and 10 or a 4-8 and eight season? Well, I think when you're young and, you know, you don't know any better. So you're just anxious to play. And you realize it's a process that you go through. And those guys are all pretty deep, intelligent men that kind of understand the process that you have to go through. It's kind of simple as that. Uh, they went to work every day. You know, Nick Algrady, of course, was here. So they had a great upperclassman that kind of showed them how it works here. You know, being an offensive lineman, how you prepare, toughness, and everything that it takes, you know, daily. So that meant an awful lot. But to be able, in an ideal world, to get uh, now that we look back on it and all that experience that they're able to get, uh, it's just a whole different vibe right now for them. Now you, it's your senior year, you play, paid your dues, and you deserve to play well. And uh, you know they had success last year, and we're a stronger team this year. We're gonna really count on them a lot. And it looks like Doug Kramer has really grown into somebody who's really well respected on the team and as a leader. How have you seen him kind of evolve from, you know, from that first day into where he's at now? I mean, Doug, you know, his journey is even more, it was even more challenging. You know, initially he came in as a gray shirt, really. We put him on scholarship right away. and He's just earned everything. But when you can snap, you know, that's pretty special. He's an athletic center. We can do a lot of things, pulling him, get him into space. But he's also, you know, strong inside because eventually kind of get, get down to that. Uh, you know, a lot of times as a center, you have a nose guard right on you. Uh, it's just everything you're looking for and more people are taking notice to what he can do as a center. You can say the same, you know, Kendrick Green, I made, you know, he's as talented as a guard. He can do it all, tough, size, 
Uh, I can say the same thing for Alex, for Darian. Um, so I would want to be a running back. I want to be a quarterback and have those guys protecting me. Thanks, Lovie. Thank you. BX Piquet. I'm sorry. I'm in next camp. Right, you go right ahead, Bob. Sorry, oh, sorry. Hey, Coach. Um, in the NFL so far, a lot of the opt-outs have been offensive linemen. I'm wondering what you're doing, special or extra, to maybe take care of those guys beyond what you're doing you do regularly for everybody else. Well, when you say take care of them, what do you mean? Like, well, what, you, what kind of – what are you doing? Is there anything you can do ex extra for those guys to protect them a little bit more? Or is that not possible? You know, I don't – you know, Bob, I don't think it's possible. You could say the same thing about a defensive lineman. They're going to be the ones that are going to have the most contact consistent contact throughout the game. Uh, I didn't, you know, once you leave the NFL, you kind of get away from it a little bit. I didn't know. I know there are a lot of NFL players that are opting out. I didn't know there were that many linemen. Don't know the reason for that. I just know that in a typical game, they're going to be in close contact a lot more than everybody else. So I assume that's the reason. For our guys, you know, college players have the same thing. I mean, you know, they're going to be in close contact quite a bit. And uh, the ones that are here right now feel comfortable with that. And uh, we'll go from there. Do you feel good about the depth you have there on, on the offensive line? I don't think you can find many coaches that feel great about the depth. And, you know, when you're building a program like we are, um, it was about first the guys that are going to play the majority of the time. Of us feeling good about guys that, you know, again, that's going to play. Then you, you, you do start working with your depth. I'll just say our depth is as good right now as it's ever been also. And I think on both sides of the football, we have a pretty capable backup that hadn't, in a lot of cases, hadn't played a lot, but we feel good about it. And of course, offensive line wise, when we talk about those guys have been playing all the time, so there's not a whole lot of experience behind them. And that's concerning. Thanks, Dutch. Welcome. Jim Cotter, and then Alec. Good afternoon, Lovey. Uh, Marquez Beeson was injured last year in the preseason. How's his attitude been coming into camp this year? And what do you expect out of him as a season? One more time, Jim. I'm Pardon? sorry. I'm sorry. Jim, you need to speak up, Jim. Oh, okay. <clears throat> is that better? Is that yeah. better? Yes, it is. Marquez Beeson was injured last year in training camp. Uh, how is his attitude coming in this year, and what do you expect from him as camp starts? Well, uh, you know, as far as what we expect from him eventually is, you know, him to become a great player. He's got all the tools to become a great player, not good, a great player. Uh, he's not 100% yet, though. But so we'll, you know, we'll gradually work him in training camp-wise. Uh, he won't be on an everyday practice routine. Uh, but nothing has changed. Uh, he, he was impressive uh, in training camp last year before he went down with injury, and he's bigger, stronger, all of that, uh, knows the game a lot better. So that's eventually that's what we're going to get from him. Thanks, Levy. You're welcome. Okay, Alec, and then uh, Mariah after that. Hey, Coach, hope you're doing well. Um, I guess the first question I had is, you know, last season you found a lot of success with the special teams and especially returning kicks with Dre Brown. Um, is there a group of guys that you're looking to do that this season for you? Yes, but we're working through, Alec, that right now. Uh, I'll just say that there's a, we have a lot of options from some of our freshmen coming in to just guys on our, on our roster right now. So we're working with quite a few guys. Uh, I'd rather have a couple more days and then I'll start kind of talking about them a little bit. But uh, we have some good options back there to catch the football and not just catch the football. We have to take our special teams to a point where we're just not talking about, you know, James and Blake and, and Ethan snapping the ball. We have to get more from our return game. And just like the rest of our team, I think we're building to be able to have a few guys that can make you miss and, you know, give the offense a couple more yards to start with. 
Um, you've had great success kicking, like you said. How Do you think Coach Liggs gets overlooked a little bit um, just because he's on special teams and not necessarily offense or defense? And how much has he kind of contributed to the success of the special teams? Oh, I think, you know, we have 10 assistant coaches, and uh, I think uh, Coach Liggs has been around a long time, and that's been acknowledged by now for a lot of people. So I know in our program it is about offense, defense, special teams, and uh, – because league has a big say in how we do things, how how we've won football games around here. Uh, but I will acknowledge the job he's done. Because league and I were talking, we about 1987 was the first time we went to training camp together. So we've known each other a long period of time, and uh, he's an outstanding coach. Thanks, Coach. I appreciate it. Welcome. All right, Mariah, and then uh, Robert Rosenthal. Hi, Lovey. How are you? I'm doing great, Mariah. You know, I took my Geritol this morning, and I'm doing pretty good. <laughs> I promise I'm not going to comment on your age today, okay? <laughs> Mariah, you know how you know how much you called me, Mariah, by those comments yesterday. I've had to answer quite a bit. <laughs> Are you okay? Or did I have a wheelchair at at, at practice for you? <laughs> no. So now I spent uh, most of my day doing push-ups out there, letting the guys see that I'm okay. You but, have to prove it to them. <laughs> Well, okay, so I'm wondering, so you've seen the Big Ten player demands. Yesterday, um, you made a point to comment that, you know, players have a say in what you do, what they do always. So how do you make sure that players are aware that there's an open line of communication between them and you? All right, that, that started four years ago when I first got here. I think if you have to all of a sudden start calling a whole lot of meetings right now. Guys, my door is open right now. If you're doing that right now, there's an issue that you have that's a lot deeper than just this. So that's how we do it around here. I think our guys will tell you that. Uh, I'm approachable. My door is open. Uh, I try to stay up as much as I possibly can on things that really matter that first affect our program and, of course, our players, and, and that's the case. Um, as I said, I've said before, I'm in favor of the players getting everything that they deserve, all of us. Uh, football has helped so many people, coaches, administrators, players and all. And uh, I think there's a happy, there's a fine line and there's a happy medium where we can all be happy. And I think that's the case with our players. And, uh, and I'll just say that we talk completely, uh, you know, as often, quite often, and I, and I know that the guys feel okay with what we're doing around here. Do you think that during these times, it's more important to have um, a certain level of communication than it was in years past? Or like you said, since you've started coaching, it's just always been something that you have put a lot of value in. I think every year there's something uh, pressing that you have to focus on a little bit. It's bigger than football, what we're de dealing with, with COVID-19, uh, with uh, you know, just the social issues that we have. They're more prevalent to a lot of people who are noticing these things. COVID-19 is different. That is just something that happened this year. The other things that we're dealing with and we're talking about, they've been there forever. And I'm saying in our program, we've tried to address those uh, other issues, not just right now. So for me to, to change, for us to have to change up and start doing a whole lot of things differently, we don't have to do that. We've been doing that all along. Great, thank you. Thank you. Okay, Robert, Gavin, and then Brad. Hey coach, so you, you lost four defensive linemen that had started nine or more games last year. Um, you got a lot of guys back who do have experience. Who are you gonna lean on on the defensive line, uh, both in returning players, but as well as newcomers? Well, first off, Rob, uh, just returning guys. As we talk about, you know, those four offensive linemen uh, that have played a lot of football around here, started as freshmen. Uh, Isaiah Gay, I think, had maybe a sack and a half his first game. Owen Carney, uh, Jamal Woods. Those guys have all played a lot of football, too. You're right, we lost players, but those guys have played an awful lot of football. Um, you know, when you bring in a couple graduate transfers, like we did with Chenadu and with Rod Perry coming in, that's saying something, and they'll get into the mix. But there's also a freshman class. 
uh, of about four defensive linemen that we can choose from also. I don't like to start talking about freshmen before they even get in pads, but we have a little bit of depth on the defensive line. Then I'm going to talk about a guy like uh, Seth Coleman that we redshirted last year, uh, Keith Randolph. We have some talented players that just need to play, and now it's their, their number has been called. It's time for them to step up, and they will. Yeah, thanks, Coach. Welcome. All right, Gavin, Brett, and then uh, Alessandra. Hey, love you. Good to see you again. Hope you're doing well today. Thank you. Um, I know you talked a little bit about the offensive line and Blake Jarosati already. Um, I, I think uh, it might have been Alex Palcheski who said it yesterday uh, when he was talking about Blake. But he mentioned that he, he said he's probably been called undersized his whole life. So I was wondering what you, what you make of, of, of him as, as a physical prospect. Um, he, he seems pretty similar to Doug Kramer for me, who I know is a stalwart for you guys. So, Yeah, you know that term, undersized. Man, I've been, it seems like I've been dealing with undersized all of my coaching career. You know, kind of started off with uh, Derek Brooks as he was playing wheel linebacker. He's undersized because he's not – uh, Brian Erlacher's size, you know, you know, linebacker-wise, we play with 220-pound guys instead of 250-pound guys. Offensive linemen, okay, if you're 330, you're right size, but if you're 300, you know, and what I look at a little bit more is their strength. I think strength is, size can be overrated when you have bad weight on, as opposed to, you know, athletic guys that have a little less weight but they're strong and they can compete hard and they can move. But when you've been told something, we all get motivated for certain reasons. When people start questioning uh, what you can do based on size, you want to prove them wrong a little bit. When you're at a, when you're at a school like Wofford and you decide to come to a place like University of Illinois, you want to prove some people wrong about what they think about you. So I know we're going to get the best version of Blake and, um, can't wait to see him on the field tomorrow. Absolutely. Um, and this is your second year now, of, you know, kind of having just one opening on that, that start for the starters for the O-line. Just wondering um, how much that consistency helps with, with this group of these four guys who are real experienced and talented that you have. Mm -hmm. I didn't really disinclude uh, Blake from that, but just because you haven't seen him. Uh, again, if you, uh, if you have every coach that you had, you'd rather, you'd rather have guys with experience. And uh, so that helps an awful lot when you play together. When we say play together, I mean, Doug, Doug, of course, was injured and played a bowl game. Alex a little banged up at the end. But our guys have been healthy, too. They've, they've all played together, uh, which now they know the pluses and minuses about, you know, each other's game and what they bring each week. It helps an awful lot. And in an ideal world, you want that experience on the offensive line, along with a fifth-year quarterback. Uh, so that's a good start. Thanks, Lovey. Thank you. Okay, we'll go with Brett and then Alessandra, and then we're going to move on to players. So two more questions. Lovey, when we last left you in San Francisco, you had said that Brandon's dive for that first down would be kind of the theme for your offseason. I think that was the last time we saw you in person. Coach Lou raved about him this offseason, what he's changed in his body and his mindset. What have you seen from Brandon coming back and being a returner and knowing the position is his this year, uh, you know, to, to lead this team? Well, Brad, you know, it starts with the quarterback. And as a coach, you as first position, how we at quarterback position. And uh, we're in great shape. And as far as things you're looking for, you know, uh, Brandon's not going to be the first guy that's going to be hooping and hollering and doing all that stuff. What he's going to do, though, is just lead by example always. I mentioned yesterday he was one of the first guys to come back to start working out in the off season. He's just been steady being here. And you mentioned that last picture of him playing in that bowl game. That's We all remember that. And that's how I see him starting the football season. He's put in a lot of time to get to this, to this position. And uh, – you know, he was at Michigan, and, you know, you, there's one team that you love to play when you're there, you know, and you get a chance to start your senior year off, your last year off against against that team, pretty special for him. But just what he's doing here, we have some young quarterbacks, and 
and just some of the young receivers running back. When you have a guy like him, it says an awful lot. Last year this time, I mean, he was just learning often. So talk about experience. Second year working with Coach Rod uh, should pay big, big dividend. Thanks, Levin. Thank you. Okay, we'll, we'll wrap up with Alessandra. Hi, Coach. Okay, so yesterday, A.D. Whitman said that there's kind of some uncertainty with um, kind of variability if you or any of your coaches or starters uh, are not allowed to play for a game. So I was wondering if there's like a game plan that you have if you or any of your coaches or starters aren't allowed to play. Yes, Alexandra. We have a game plan for third and one, third and five, first and 15, really kind of everything. And um, it is a little different. We could have one. I mean, I could be down. I mean, I could get in and I'd be able to coach in a game. and uh, It'll be the next person up. We have a plan in place for every position as far as making calls and just really every position group. Anybody that has a game day responsibility, and not just game day responsibility, practice responsibility that we have to have in place. And we do that. Of course, I'm not going to talk about that right now, but uh, we do have that in place. And uh, if it happens, we'll be ready to go. It's just like a player. You know, you could go down with injury at, at any time. There's always next person up. We have a next person up for all of our positions here. Anything else, Alessandra? All right, you know, we even have a plan if an SID goes down. So I think we're hopefully we're covered there. All right, uh, Coach, thank you very much for your time today. We appreciate it, and we'll talk again tomorrow. See you later. Take care. Thanks, Evan.